These stories bother me in the worst way, especially when you have active fathers who are there and they're able to take care of these children, willing to take care of these children. And it sucks to see that a lot of these situations like this mother just flat out was like, nope, I don't want you involved. But then you have a very dire need to have the biological father involved. You avoid that and then give option B, which is the worst possible option ever imaginable. Can we get a hashtag when you date thugs, you date death? It's one of the AFC hashtags. But let me give you guys a disclaimer. We could also get a hashtag babies for benefits too. About my type of content. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Now I'm getting this story from people.com. Just thought it was comprehensive, easy to understand. So thank you for the article. The mother of a missing boy by the name of Elijah Vu or Elijah Vu. I think it's Vu, V-U-E. Three years old, allegedly sent... The mother sent the boy to her boyfriend for disciplinary reasons. So she was basically saying that her son was acting up and she sent her son not to his biological father, not to his family members, to her boyfriend. Can we get a hashtag when you date thugs, you date death? Y'all are not going to believe this. Elijah, who was three years old, was last seen around 8 a.m. on February 20th, Two Rivers Police Department said in a statement. His mother, Katrina Bauer, B-A-U-R, I think that's how you pronounce it, or Bear, Bauer, whatever, 31 years old, was arrested two days after he was reported missing by the boyfriend, Jesse Vang, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S Vang, V-A-N-G. V is in voice, A is in Adam, N is in Nancy, G is in Grace. Shout out to Nancy Grace, by the way. Court records show Bauer is charged with child neglect. Vang was also arrested on a charge of child neglect per online court records. Vang, who was 39 years stupid, I mean 39 years old, was the person who called 911 claiming he couldn't find Elijah, according to a criminal complaint obtained by Fox 11 and reviewed by People. Vang lives at the same address in Two Rivers where Vu was last seen, according to a complaint. It's about to get a bit more complicated, so brace yourselves. Prosecutors now allege that Bauer sent Elijah to her boyfriend, Vang, for disciplinary concerns. That's him with the tattoos on his neck. Let me see if I can back that up so y'all can see them damn tattoos. I want y'all to see that beautiful little boy. I want y'all to see these tattoos on this fool. Look at that. Everything about like, like, does that look like somebody that needs to have access to a living, breathing child? He don't need to be disciplining a dog, a cat, a turtle, an alligator, a fish, nothing living. He needs to be around and disciplining nothing at all. She sent her son to Vang for disciplinary concerns despite being aware of alleged tactics that this man uses, citing prosecutor statements in court. So she knew. She intentionally sent that, that child for disciplinary concerns for more than a week to, to the residence. She was aware of the tactics used and the lack of care provided. Let me see. Manitowoc District Attorney Jacqueline Labrie said in court last week, per the news, she said that this was an intentional move on Bauer's part. Vang, the boyfriend, told authorities that he was helping Bauer, the mother, quote unquote, correct the child's bad behaviors. He said he fell asleep in his room after dropping his teenage son at the school bus, according to a complaint. He said Elijah was with him in the room, but when he woke up, the child was gone. How many times have we heard that? We've all heard this crock of crap a bunch. 
All these stories seem to follow the same narrative. A few, week, a few days before Elijah's disappearance, Vang, the boyfriend, texts the mother to say that he was angry because the child had overfilled his diaper. He's a baby. That's what he does. So Vang, the boyfriend, gave him a cold shower. Can we get another hashtag, another bathtub story? This strange man who has no DNA tied to this child and this man who looks like he is a part of the Chinese mob is showering your naked child. By the way, when I call him a thug, he has a long criminal history. So just know that. He gave him a shower. Authorities are carrying out an intensive investigation that involves extensive searches by Two Rivers Police who vow in a statement to leave no stone unturned. They're conducting searches at landfills and local rivers, so they ain't even found this child's body yet. They said in a follow-up statement, their search involves using drones as well as officers following tips and leads and searching on foot. Bauer, the mother, is being held on a $15,000, let me say that again, $15,000 cash bond. And Vang, the boyfriend, is being held on a $20,000 cash bail, according to online records. Does that sound right to y'all? It don't to me. Vang was previously charged, let me repeat, was previously charged with child abuse from 2002 and pled no contest according to online records. No plea information was available on the docket on the court docket for either suspects. People wasn't able to immediately reach attorneys listed for them. Elijah is described as having Hmong, H M O N G and white ethnicity with dark blonde hair and brown eyes, police said in a Tuesday release. He was last seen wearing gray pants, a, lar- a long sleeve dark shirt, and red and green dinosaur shoes. He is possibly carrying a red and white plaid blanket. Police said Elijah also has a birthmark on his left knee. Anyone with information about Elijah is asked to contact the state tip, state tip line at 844-267-6648 or Two Rivers Police, 920-686-7200. If you suspect child abuse, see something, say something. Call the National Child Abuse Hotline at 800-4-CHILD or 800-422-4453 or childhelp.org. All calls are free and confidential. Hotlines available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and available in more than 170 languages. Let me give you guys the fair use. Crazy. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I want y'all to really listen to this verse video because it literally takes the words right out of my mouth. So I want y'all to hear this. Do me a favor and please click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and share this video. Those are things that you could do to help us quite a bit. Listen to this and shout out to this young lady. Y'all should know this voice. Good Lord in heaven. I take it that this is the so-called boyfriend. Is this, am I looking at the boyfriend here, Jesse Vang? Because look, if I am, I can tell you right now. Those aren't glamour shots at the mall. These are shots that go way, way back, and they're all mug shots. Why in the world would a woman pick this guy with mug shots dating back for years to, quote, discipline her child? I, I don't get it. Look at this. Aisha Morales, what's on his rap sheet? There's a lot of different charges, um, including child abuse, for, for sure, fleeing an officer. You guys have it, possession of cocaine, drug, bail jumping, lots of disorderly conduct type of charges. But uh, child abuse is on there. Uh, so that was one of the first things that we noticed as well. 
child abuse, fleeing officer, manufacturing, deliver, possession, cocaine. That's cocaine with intent to distribute. That's a major felony. Resisting an officer, possession, cocaine, resisting an officer, bail jumping, D.C. and D.U.I. And that's who is going to take care of your child. There are new efforts underway to find missing three-year-old Elijah Vu. The boy was last seen on February 20th in Two Rivers, but he lived in Wisconsin Dells before that. Searches in Two Rivers have been going on ever since he was reported missing. Only on 27 News, Rachel Perry has you covered on how people hope to bring those same efforts to the Dells. Think about him every minute of yeah. every day. Every day for more than two weeks. We both thought it was like a bad movie. Pam and her husband Dan, like so many others, pray for Elijah Vu's safe return. Trina came here with the kids about two or three months after we moved here. We just became really close to him, um, attached to him. The couple tells 27 News the three-year-old would always come over to play, and they even spent some holidays together. I mean, we have his toys and stuff in our house, you know. Every time I, I look at something, it reminds me yep. of him. Investigators claim Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, sent him to her boyfriend, Jesse Vang's house, in Two Rivers for behavioral problems. He was just not a, a troubled boy. He wasn't no. unhappy. So think about how much sense that makes. This alleged mother is sending her child to her boyfriend, not his father, to her boyfriend, who has a proven track history of not being able to be proper around children, but he has behavioral issues himself. But that's who you send your child to? That sounds like you wanted your child to die. Before being sent to Two Rivers, we're told Elijah lived here at an apartment on Race Street in Wisconsin Dells with his mother. Search efforts have since expanded this way, but haven't gained as much traction. And I started joining like the Wisconsin Dells groups, and I noticed that there was not one mention of Elijah on any of the pages, including the Wisconsin Dells police page. April Backus lives near Two Rivers. But if any of my kids were missing, I would rally the entire world if I had to to try to get them help. So she started this group, Search for Elijah Vu, Wisconsin Dells area, on Facebook. I just hope to get people out looking for Elijah um, and make it easier for them to find other people in that area that are also out looking. Pam and Dan are now crossing their fingers. The searches bring good news. Whoever's got him, please bring him home. In Wisconsin Dells, Rachel Perry, 27 News. Okay, Rachel, thank you. Jesse Vang and Katrina Bauer are scheduled to be in court tomorrow. There is now a combined $25,000 reward for information that could bring Elijah home. Elijah Vu has been missing for more than two weeks, but the search organized by his family at the Mikado Theater in Manitowoc resumes. I'm your Lakeshore neighborhood reporter, Preston Stober, and today I talked with a couple of the searchers to get their perspectives on some of the developments in Elijah's case. Day 16 of searching. What needs to be done, you know, for my family, I would want answers. Manitowoc local Mike Miller decided to help the search for the second time this week. A lot of roads to cover, a lot of miles. The more we can get crossed off, the more, you know, family keep moving on, searching new areas here. After police released photos of this 1997 Nissan Altima in connection with the investigation, Mike hopes a breakthrough will condense the search. Pin down at least some area of this county. Uh, right now, we're just searching the whole county. Uh, it's a big county. But fellow searcher Lori Supel thinks the car provides more questions than answers. Where did the car even come from? We don't know where the car, did it live in the apartment complex? Was it friends of theirs? Uh, maybe just a little bit more information. Was there DNA found in the car? Like, why do we think it's this specific car? She hopes more answers come during Vang and Bowers court appearances tomorrow let the people know, like the Vu family, not people us, like the Vu family, what actually happened to this little boy so that they can sleep at night. But Mike doesn't think anything new will come from the case. I believe if the authorities don't have the answers yet from them, tomorrow's not going to change it. So we just need to keep on pushing forward here with the search. Once again, this is the vehicle that the Two Rivers Police Department has asked people to check their cameras for dating back to February 19th. Katrina Bauer and Jesse Vang will appear in the Manitowoc County Courthouse at 10.30 a.m. on Thursday.
As for Elijah's family, they will continue to search based out of the Mikado Theater here in Manitowoc throughout the rest of the week. In Manitowoc, Preston Stober, NBC 26. It's been two weeks and still no sign of three-year-old Elijah Vu. With a search for the missing Wisconsin boy still underway, the community has not lost hope. As police expand their search for Elijah, here's what we know about the toddler's disappearance. Elijah Vu was last seen on February 20th at a home in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Now, according to officials, the boy's mother sent him to that home so he could learn to, quote, be a man. Elijah's mother, 31-year-old Katrina Bauer, left her son in the care so she wanted a criminal to teach her son how to be a man, not the biological father, though. Isn't that something? ...of a 39-year-old man named Jesse Vang. Vang told authorities that he was trying to correct Elijah's bad behavior, adding that the three-year-old was afraid of him. Vang said he used timeouts to discipline Elijah, where he was forced to stand for one to three hours and required to pray. Documents also said Vang forced Elijah to take a cold shower and regularly threatened him with cold water for not complying. The boy's mother told police she left Elijah with Vang on February 12th and intended to pick him up on February 23rd. But on February 20th, Vang called police and reported Elijah missing. He told police he had taken a nap that morning and brought Elijah in the bedroom with him. But when he awoke about three hours later, the boy was gone. Both Vang and Bauer were charged in connection with Elijah's disappearance, though they claim they had nothing to do with it. As for their charges, Bauer was hit with one felony count of party to a crime child neglect and two misdemeanor counts of resisting or obstructing an officer. Vang was also charged with one felony count of party to a crime child neglect. As the search for Elijah continues, officials have provided updates to the public. On February 27th, the FBI announced a $15,000 reward for anyone with information leading to Elijah's return. On March 4th, Wisconsin authorities revealed that a car of interest had been identified in the search for Elijah. Police say the 1997 four-door beige Nissan Altima is in their possession. They confirm the car has a Wisconsin license plate that begins with an A and ends with a zero, but have not released the name of the car's owner. In the latest update, police said that they will be expanding their rural search efforts on March 5th. The large-scale search will be performed with assistance from law enforcement across the state. So, at the end of the day, you would have to look at this, and let me see if I can back this up just for a second and show you guys this. This right here, to me, this speaks everything that you need to know about this story. You look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's at least 14 mug shots. You can't judge a book by its cover. The hell you can't. If the contents are correct, then yes, you can judge a book by its cover. Look at this. And that's who you wanted to get your son going in the right direction. Somebody who has never his entire life done anything in the right direction. But who will cry for the little boy, not the mother, not the boyfriend, and you won't even give the dad custody or credit. Won't let the dad try, but you'll let the boyfriend that you wanted to screw, this fool, who has been nothing his entire life. For that alone, I think the mother and boyfriend need life in prison. Do you expect for this man to be honest about where this child's dead body is? I know he's dead, and we're not going to find his body. You think, you, think, you think he's going to be honest? I don't think so. Just really pisses me off, and I hope you guys are just as pissed about this story and the things that keep happening to these kids. So I think just as well as we blame the boyfriend, blame the moms just as much. Let me know what you guys think about this story, To the little boy, Young Prince, R.I.P. It'll only bring us closure if they can find the body. And that is a huge, huge if. Okay? Let me know what you guys think about this. Okay? Thank you.